All right, Jared here, and I'm just going to be telling some stories from the workshop this past Sunday in San Jose at New Life Yoga Studio. And really touching workshop, it was about intuitive eating. Now intuitive eating, if you haven't heard of it, it's the opposite of dieting. So if dieting just hasn't worked for you, this is the thing for you, intuitive eating. Now the workshop, we focused on, it was an interesting workshop because we didn't really go over that much information in my perspective. We talked about relationships. Instead of giving a ton of slides, we gave one little picture and then we broke off into partners so that people connected. So they share their stories. It's a beautiful environment. If you ever haven't, if you haven't been to New Life Yoga Studio, it's uh, right by the malls downtown. It's, it's a beautiful place. We got this waterfall. And so people, we came into this gorgeous setting and we were able to just relax. And I remember people feeling a little tense because we're talking about a personal topic, dieting, extremely vulnerable, personal topic. So we need to feel safe. And so here's how it went. We got into Shavasana, we laid down, we breathed, and then we got together as a group. And then we talked about these different topics, like the definition of dieting or the science of dieting and does it work long term? And for each of these topics, we'd break into groups, like partners, we'd talk, we'd connect, and then we would um, share our stories together as a group. And we'd just talk, and you know, for me, honestly, like, I had, a, I had a tough time staying present and connected and going with the emotional flow of the situation. I, I was able to do it, I had a blast, but um, you know, I was just so like, okay, are we on time? Are we getting all the right conversations? You know, are we, are we as a group, are we coming to the right conclusions? Are, are we kind of understanding the dangers of dieting? Are we understanding why people are confused? You know, so it was like, I had a lot going on in the back of my mind. It was kind of tough to stay present but I was really thankful for the breaks in the, um, in the, the, the workshop that I had built into it. So every, every topic we'd switch, we'd go back into a yoga pose, just relax. And I was like, Oh, thank God. Like I'm really anxious right now. Oh my God. I need to like use these breaks to calm myself down. Um, with that being said, it was so rich. It was so good. Oh my God. Ah, I just want to go back. Um, you know, just people talking about what's important to them and coming together and realizing, you know what, this dieting thing is kind of messed up. Um, and there was a couple stories I wanted to share with you. These stories, uh, were personal. I'm not going to share any personal details, but what came up was, uh, these three questions. Why is it so hard to accept dieting doesn't work? Two, I'm scared that if I eat intuitively, I'll eat unhealthy, I won't stop eating. And three, um, what if I can't feel my hunger? What if I'm disconnected to my body? How do I reconnect? So I'll just share with you a little bit about these stories and um, I'm not, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna give away anything personal, but these stories were real and um, and maybe you can relate to any of them. And if you can and you want to shoot me a message, uh, you can just PM me. I'll, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. There's also the website weightlossenlightenment.com. So with that being said, um, the overall theme of the workshop was, as you can see right on this picture, open up. Like weight loss oftentimes is a clenched fist. It's like, Arr, I got to lose weight. Arr! It's rigid, controlling, obsessive. Open up. We got to relax. We got to open up and let weight loss go. And that can be really, really tough for people. And one woman, um, she had come from a long history of, of uh, Weight Watchers. And Weight Watchers is very willpower focused. There's a lot of implicit shame. You weigh in together as a group. So if you don't lose weight, there's kind of a shame factor in there. And she had tried Weight, weight Watchers for, for years. Going there, going back, going there, going back, going there, going back, going there, going back. And so when she sees some of the science on Weight Watchers by Weight Watchers, you know, we, we, we looked at Weight Watchers website. Weight Watchers website said their product only lasts up to 12 months. We looked at that on their website. And so she's starting to go like, holy shit, Weight Watchers, like they're almost deceiving me. Diets work in the short term, but they don't work in the long term. That's why I feel so confused. 
you know, I feel confused about dieting because my friend is losing weight on a diet, but I haven't seen weight loss. So how is this all possible? That's why there's so much confusion. So she started getting clear on the confusion. She started seeing clearly, oh, I get confused because I see weight loss in the short term. And then I think it's my fault that the weight comes back in the long term. Why do I feel confused is because there's, there's different time spans. It's short term versus long term. She saw that she got, un she got unconfused, but then she's like, I see that dieting doesn't work, but it's so hard for me to accept. Why is that? And I, I've come across this, this, this thing before and it's, it's, it's tough because there's an inclination to think that you failed dieting. You know, even though you did not know diets were bad, you did not know that long-term diets don't work, now you do, there's an inclination to think you should have known. You should have done better. You should have known better. It's like survivor's guilt. When, when you know, maybe you're uh, just walking down the street and someone is crossing the street ahead of you, they get hit by a car. And and then you, you, you call 911 and 911 shows up late and the person dies. And now you have survivor's guilt. You think, oh my God, I should have called 911 faster. I should have, um, should have, uh, you know, seen that car coming and warned the person. I should have pushed. You get all these thoughts about what you could have done differently. And it's hard to forgive yourself. It's really, really hard to forgive yourself. You know, when you've put so much effort into trying to lose weight and then you realize it's a doomed effort, it's hard. And the only way we can do this is by letting weight loss go. This is a, this is like in your soul level. This is in your soul. Like back when I was a monk and I was trying to achieve enlightenment, I kind of had to, I had this like burning desire. All I wanted was enlightenment. I had dropped out of college. I had, you know, I had gone to this mon I basically cut myself off from all my friends, all my family. I just wanted enlightenment. I thought if I got enlightenment, somehow my life would get better. And it was like I'd sacrificed so much that, you know, if, it, you know, I was invested so much, my self-worth was invested that it was hard to let go. It was hard to let go. And so that's what weight loss is. It's like letting go of that attachment to weight loss and forgiving yourself and realizing, you know, and forgiving yourself and realizing this was the best you could have done. So I know... That can be tough, but that's that's the way through it is forgiveness. That's why weight loss can be hard to accept is because you're not forgiving yourself for trying weight loss and failing at it. You got to forgive yourself. So the other question that came up revolved around um, uh, what's it called? Uh, oh yeah, planking. But I got it. <laughs> it was okay. I get it. Dieting doesn't work. Intuitive eating is good. How do I, you know, I'm scared that if I intuitively eat, I'm not going to stop eating. I'm going to endlessly eat bad foods. I'm going to gain all this weight and it's just going to be like awful for me. So how do I reconcile that? And the short answer for that is, you know, the person who asked this was, she started dieting at a young age. Um, one of her parents had actually taken to her Weight Watchers. I don't know why Weight Watchers comes up, but anyways, there's tons of other diets that people do, but this workshop, it was all about Weight Watchers, I guess. Anyways, her mom had taken her to a Weight Watchers meeting when she was in middle school, I believe. And she'd been on and off diets her entire life. Her doctor had recommended them. Um, she tried them herself. She knew, she knew about nutrition. She knew about everything, yet diets had not worked. They made her anxious around food. Every time she attempted a diet, she referenced all of her past failures instantly in her head. And she was like, no, I'm not going to, you know, in the back of her head, she, she just knew no trust in herself. I'm, you know, I'm kind of reading into this, but it was, it was, it was that very little trust in dieting and her ability to control her food. And, and her thing was, you know, she'd been in this paradigm of controlling food. Look at my fist, right? Control your food. You know, track your food, weigh your food, control that closed fist. Remember this, this, that open the hand, open up, let weight loss go. So she starts realizing, oh, I got to open up. I got to, I got to eat intuitively. All right. 
I can't diet. That's diet's is closed fist. I gotta open my fist. I gotta receive. But holy shit! Then when as soon as you open that fist, those fears, those deep seated fears come in, because dieting, she had learned at a young age, these dieting myths that if you eat unhealthy, you're gonna effing die. You're gonna be fat. You're gonna. You're gonna be a worthless piece of shit if you eat this this unhealthy food. Now that might not be conscious. That might be a subconscious association with unhealthy food or just not eating perfectly. So when she thinks, starts thinking about letting go of control, immediately her mind goes to the worst case scenario. Oh my God, if I let go of control, I'm going to be a fat fucking pig. I'm going to be huge. I'm going to be ginormous. I, I, you know, that's, that's the subconscious fear. Let's examine where this came from, this subconscious fear that if you don't control your food, you're going to be overweight. Well, oftentimes, as we learn in, in the science of dieting, dieting causes people to gain more weight. So it's paradoxical. It's effed up. It's really messed up. When you're young, you start to try to diet because you see a magazine picture, right? You're like a young girl, young guy, whatever. And you try to, you see this magazine picture. It's very thin, very beautiful. You don't know any better. And then in the magazine, there's a diet. It says, eat this, eat that, don't eat this, don't eat that. You try to do that diet, you lose weight. Then you don't, you don't know, you're ignorant. You're ignorant. Not your fault. Not your fault. Not ignorant in a bad way, just you don't know. You don't know that diets don't work in the long term. So guess what happens? The weight comes back. You then internalize. You, uh, your body is not trustworthy. And oftentimes... Because you're immersed in dieting mentality, the conclusion you make is you need to control your body more. If you were an intuitive eating mentality, the mentality would be something like you need to listen to your body more. But with dieting mentality, especially since the dieting industry is so big, $585 billion, they got a lot of marketing messages. They promote these messages that say you need to control your food. So as a young kid, you start to control your food. That leads you to try another diet where you control backfires, you lose more trust, you try to control again. Now, meanwhile, you're th you're, this fear of lack of control is caused by control. But you're, you're trying to control your body, and then your body revolts, and you feel afraid of your body. And this gets paired up. It's very hard to distinguish. It gets very hard to distinguish. Controlling your food versus... Um, letting go. So we have this letting go of weight loss. It's absolutely terrifying letting go of weight loss. Most people, when they try to lose weight, they're closing the fist of, of, you know, and so when they open up all of a sudden, those past fears, all that shame, all those associations of failure, they come roaring back and they say, your body is going to attack you. It's going to eat so much food. You're going to be a fat pig. You're going to fail again. That can be very overwhelming, very overwhelming. And so a couple things how we work with this. Um, we work with this, first of all, by, by realizing, you know, the, the, the concept is, this concept is, is shallow. I'll give you the overview, but it's not the emotional answer. The emotional answer is go at your own pace. Um, go at your own pace, listen to your body. You know, if you feel overwhelmed, it's okay. You can back off. You don't have to do anything one way. Um, but the, the answer is by letting yourself eat unhealthy food without guilt, without shame, with full awareness that you will naturally start to not want that food. Um, previously in dieting mentality, you had said, I can't have that. And guess what happens when you say, I can't have that? Your subconscious mind then says, I want that. <laughs> it's like, it's like in dating, right? If you, I, I've, I've done this so many times where if you're available, you're not wanted right? <laughs> if you're available, you're not wanted, right? When you're unavailable, oh my God, that's valuable. I want that. Same thing with the food. When you block that food off, it becomes insanely valuable. You say, oh, I can't eat unhealthy. Well, your subconscious mind is then saying, oh, I want that. Even though if you're not consciously aware of it. So when you first get rid of those barriers, a lot of this is subconscious work. You, um, you let yourself have the food. You might be deathly afraid. But you do your best to be mindful. You do your best to just eat one bite at a time. Try to listen to your body. 
Maybe you feel total freedom, like, wow, I'm actually letting myself eat an unhealthy food without guilt. Holy crap, this feels amazing. And I want more. And you go on a little bit of a binge. You go on a little bit of, you eat too much unhealthy food. And this is the key. You gotta, you gotta sustain the guilt-freeness through this period. It might even be a couple weeks. Might be a couple weeks. It's usually not that long, but you gotta sustain that guilt-free period where you're exploring the foods that you hadn't allowed yourself to have. What that tells your subconscious brain is that these foods aren't particularly valuable. They're actually just normal foods. And once your brain can internalize, these are just normal foods, um, then you can listen to your body more and your body will start to be like, oh shit, I don't want these foods. You know, I'm going to eat healthier instead because I want to, because my body wants to. And that's how we develop a craving for healthy foods. Lastly, the last question was hunger. And, um, and the, the, the shorter answer, the short answer about hunger is keeping, this is so important for becoming an intuitive eater, keeping a record, journaling and reflecting, like not tracking in the sense that you're tracking calories, but reflecting and learning. So a huge thing you can do if you can't feel your, if you can't feel your hunger, um, this happens to a fair amount of people. If you diet for so long, you get disconnected to your, bo to your body because you're following a diet. The diet tells you what to eat, when to eat, how to eat. So you stop listening to your body. You listen to the external resource, the diet. Weight loss enlightenment, obviously let weight loss go. Um, return to your body, listen to your own voice. As you listen to your own voice, if you haven't listened to your own voice in a while, you're not going to be able to hear it. So what happens is you can't feel your hunger and, and it might just be baffling. You just don't know. So you keep a little journal. You, uh, you or you, re you reflect somehow. You got to reflect. How hungry was I before I ate that? How full was I after I ate that? Give yourself a little rating. Notice the sensations. This is important. This is this is work. This is work, okay? This is work. <laughs> it's not that hard, but it's a little bit of work. Um, you know, you write down, here's what I'm feeling, or you just notice, here's what my stomach feels like before I eat. I'm not sure what how hungry I am. I'm not sure how full I am. I'm not even sure if I'm hungry, but I'm going to eat this food. Here's what I feel like. Here's what, I'm going to take a guess on a hunger scale. This is where I'm at. I'm at a four on hunger or whatever. You give it a little rating. Here's what four feels like, I think. You eat the food, you rate it afterwards. You say, okay, here's how full I am. Here's what it feels like. And you do that for a couple days, maybe a week. And you get this little record, this little tracking sheet of food. And you say, oh, you have all these different data points that are saying, here's how hungry you are. Here's how hungry you are. This is what it feels like. And then you can start to internalize Oh, that's what hunger feels like. That's what fullness feels like. And then you can really start to rewire your brain to be connected to your body. Now, with that being said, um, I, I hope you're able to take these insights and apply them. If you're at all confused, again, just private message me on uh, the Facebook page, Weight Loss Enlightenment. And um, I hope to see you soon. Okay.